I'm an all or nothing person. I like things black and white. We've all heard phrases like this. Perhaps it's even you saying this. Other examples of this all or nothing thinking sound like, I go all the way or I don't even bother. You're right or you're wrong. It's either this way or that. And it goes even deeper. I'm successful or worthless. Smart or stupid. Perfect or failing. Skinny or fat. Happy or sad. Life is absolutely wonderful or it's terrible. Individuals who are apt to thinking in this way struggle with seeing the gray area and tend to believe things have to be one way or the other. They can be uncomfortable with the in-between. We hear this kind of self-labeling quite frequently at Skytero Wellness when guests talk about their workout consistency or how they stick to or give up eating certain kinds of foods. We hear it when it comes to drinking alcohol every night or how we overwork ourselves and our jobs. Sometimes there's a sense of bravado with this behavior, like it's a badge of honor to live in extremes. After all, our society does indeed reward this kind of behavior. Let me also state that I do not think there's anything wrong with this kind of mentality. I do believe it can help us succeed. And at the same time, it can limit us when it comes to our health and our behaviors. So let's discuss ways we can expand black or white thinking. How does believing in this affect your health? I'm Kate Hannon, the Director of Integrated Wellbeing at Skyterra Wellness, and today we will explore how this all or nothing thinking affects our fitness, the way we eat, and how we relate to ourselves. We will also hear from our Director of Fitness, Jeff Ford, and Director of Operations and Yoga Guru, Amber Shadwick, to hear their perspectives on this mindset. When I hear people express all or nothing attitudes, I think it comes down to one thing, perfectionism. Once we see how we hold ourselves to a very high standard, we can understand how this mindset can be destructive. It's a limiting and self-sabotaging way to live. If I expect to be perfect from practicing a certain behavior, say working out or eating only the best foods, then what happens when I don't achieve that result when I expect to? Or one day I choose to rest or indulge in some sweets? Does this mean I'm a failure? Well, if I'm a black or white thinker, yes, because perfectionism often doesn't allow room for error. It has set us up for failure before we even begin because it implies that we aren't allowed to make mistakes. However, we are human, and sometimes life gets messy. If I'm only focused on perfectly achieving this end goal, my focus is only on the result, the end product. I want to express how important it is to learn to become a gray thinker, to focus on the process. Diets are a perfect example of perfectionism and ultimately set us up for failure. Think about it. They promise the magical quick fix to losing weight. However, they're full of rigid rules and restrictions. So what happens if you're stressed and food is how you choose to soothe yourself one night? Or you're tired of all the rules and feel deprived from the stuff you crave, like sugar, fats, alcohol, and carbs, and rebel against the diet. Then you end up binging on them. You gave up. Now how do you talk to yourself in that moment? This is the time when we want to expand our thinking. On top of that, our skinny-obsessed culture embraces the all-or-nothing mentality, too. We're bombarded with images of thin people who appear to have it all, and advertising tells us to work hard, play harder. Starve now, be happy later. We're convinced the solution lies in extreme thinking and living, and most of us internalize a poor body self-image as a result of it. We forget that genetics play a huge role in our bodies. We forget our worth doesn't rely on how we look on the outside. And that not everyone is going to have a small waist, a thigh gap, perfectly sculpted muscles. So does that mean giving up on being healthy altogether? No. We want to learn to accept ourselves the way we are. The way you are now. This doesn't mean that this is the way you will always be. So let's prioritize being healthy. What does being healthy mean? What does it feel like in your body? Health comes at every size, and it's not just something you look like, but something you feel. But when we think we should be perfect, it's real easy to give up trying. Here are two practical tips to expanding the all-or-nothing thinking mindset. First, prioritize the small steps. You don't have to have it all figured out to move forward. Just take the next step. Setting simple and measurable goals can help you experience success and motivate you to move forward, which is how we really make a new habit stick. So whether you're learning to eat mindfully or move consistently and stick to your plan, you get that replacing the old way of being takes some time, and part of this process includes falling off track, even slipping up. Some may call it a relapse, and it's a test to your commitment. 
So when it happens, you forgive yourself and carry on. You don't need to start over tomorrow or even next week. You can do it in the next moment. Each moment can be a new beginning. And this leads us to the second tip, forgiving ourselves, right? Forgiving yourself requires shifting your self-talk from negative to positive. You learn to catch yourself when you're engaging in this harsh, judgmental, and self-criticizing voice and confront it, release it, and replace it. We remember that in this challenging thing called life, there is room for error. That is how we learn. Mistakes are portals of discovery, not a character defect. Negative self-talk will only lead to more anxiety, depression, and lack of confidence. So when you hear that voice in you say, forget it, I'm a willpower weakling, I can't stick to anything, or I will always be this way, why bother trying? I'm lazy, fat, always have been, and this is just too hard. Sometimes it comes up like, I cheated on one meal and ate cookies. I'm a failure and my entire day is blown. That's the moment to start over. Pause. Accept that it's a challenging emotion, catching yourself in the moment and releasing it. I am human. I'm having a hard day and overrate because I was feeling tired and lonely. Remember, what you ate on a certain day doesn't reflect on who you are as a person. Remember to breathe, practice self-compassion through that positive self-talk, and continue taking one step at a time. Exactly, Kate. Imagine this, everyone. You're up first thing in the morning and complete workouts at least four days per week. You're spending a couple of days executing strength training routines and alternating with cardio interval sessions. Your body starts to change. You look forward to your workouts, and you don't beat yourself up if you miss a day. You recognize that it's unrealistic to hit every single workout according to your plan. On the days that you don't happen to work out, you still give yourself credit for consistent movement within your day. You are no longer judging yourself by how many hours you spend at the gym. The all or nothing mentality can be a huge roadblock for the best of fitness plans. You might catch yourself saying, if I miss my workout class on Monday, what's the point of even trying the rest of the week? Or what about the feeling you get that in order for your plan to be quote unquote successful, you have to hit every single workout. If you skip a day, how dare you? Sadly, how you define what's a good day versus bad day in all aspects of your health will be a big predictor of your ultimate ability to adhere to your plan. The more judgment you place on missing your workouts or doing something aka bad will lead to your demise. Additionally, understand that exercise is merely a human invention designed to compensate for the fact that we are not living the way we're supposed to. If you are walking throughout your day and breaking up long periods of sitting with movement and mobility breaks, that does count towards your overall fitness. There's this thinking that when you work out, it has to always be intense. No pain, no gain. Burn a lot of calories, otherwise it doesn't count. This is just another black and white judgment that's far from the truth, completely neglecting the value of what fitness actually does for our health. Now it's time to shift your thinking and realize that missing a workout here and there happens to even the fittest. You don't have to go at it intensely every day, and there is tons of value in low-stress workouts or walks right after your meals. Remove the guilt and shame that surrounds your missed exercise sessions and keep an 80-20 mindset. Perfection is neither possible nor necessary for success to take place with your fitness routine. You'll be on 80% of the time, and the other 20% brush it off your shoulder. It's not about how much you do, but how you do it that matters most. Accept your own imperfections and be able to accommodate for your slips. Include days off from exercise and listen to your body. In this flight or fight world, you have to know when to scale back. Saying no and remaining intuitive with your fitness routine will break your all or nothing mentality. As Jeff said, it's not about how much you do, but how you do it that matters the most. Accepting our own perfections and listening to our body. There is so much power in the present moment. As distractions are everywhere we turn. How many times have you driven to work, sat down for lunch with someone, or dinner with your family while your mind has been somewhere else? Our minds are constantly full of worries, fears, doubts, and often negative self-talk. We are constantly worried we didn't do enough today and or are fearful of what tomorrow may bring. And our brief moments of hope and realization of how remarkably far we have come, we are continually reminded and plagued with how far yet we have to go. If we could only be like children whose minds and bodies flow seamlessly 
moment to moment. Their past has been short and their future remains unknown. Whereas we age, our past is difficult and extensive and our futures appear somewhat predictable, or so we believe. If we continue to run from every negative experience or judge ourselves from the past, we are allowing our past to dictate our future. Yoga allows us to pause, to connect. We are able to arrive in that moment in our bodies and in our minds. We are able to open ourselves to our past while wholeheartedly accepting the reality of the present moment, not worrying or trying to predict the future. Yoga allows us to break attachments to particular outcomes. We are able to solely surrender to the present moment. So if you are living with the all or nothing mentality or mindset, you are giving yourself permission to remain stuck in a constant state of sympathetic or stress response. Worry and anxiety fill the mind and the body reacts with imbalance. When we do yoga, our mind and bodies are balanced. They work together harmoniously. It's true, Amber. How we strengthen our body-mind connection is by remembering life is not black and white. There are a lot of unknowns in what we call the gray area. We learn how to get comfortable with that. But often when we really grow and evolve as a person, it doesn't happen in this glorious, perfect moment like standing on top of a mountain and the heavens open up. It happens slowly, sustainably, in the small, everyday experiences. At Skyterra, we teach you tools how to expand this all-or-nothing attitude, how to increase positive self-talk about your food choices, how you move your body, how to be mindful. Yes, even you can learn how to cultivate self-compassion and be more forgiving to yourself. All or nothing thinking is rigid and often not a very helpful companion on our wellness journey. Expanding your perspectives inspire and encourage you. You learn to understand when you've had a hard day. You give yourself that permission to be human. And furthermore, you cultivate connections with others so you can lead a richer and more vibrant life. 